What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. Listen, we are here for Kiki's World Season 1, Episode 6. And listen, next week is the season finale. I really hope we get a second season. I'm really enjoying the show. I really feel like we we, we are getting, um, we're getting some good stuff. We're getting some good stuff. I'm going to say this, though. So we start this episode off, we see Kiki talking to her son, uh, Raja, the one who had the birthday party. And basically, she's trying to convince him that he should talk to his grandmother. Raja said he has no interest in having a conversation with his grandmother. Now, Raja said, listen, I don't think it can be fixed. At this point, I just don't think this can be fixed. Now, Kiki's thing was, we can't change the past. But we can fix the future, right? And her thing is we're family. And at the end of the day, we need to talk this out. We need to fix it because it's our family. I'm still very conflicted on this from the point of view of I get all of that. Yes, it's family, blah, 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 blah. But I also feel like when people set their boundaries, we should respect it. And I understand that he's 20. And I and I, I read all the comments. Some people said, "Oh, he's a brat." And he, I think he now he's definitely a brat. He's definitely spoiled, and I do think he's a little disrespectful. However, comma, I also feel like when people set a boundary, it should be respected. I also feel like if he feels disrespected, and he has expressed that that he feels disrespected, and he says she needs to apologize. But then I got to the next scene, and I wasn't conflicted no more. Let me tell you why I wasn't conflicted no more. Because the next scene is Lorna talking to Uncle Dougie. Now, Uncle Dougie is where all this whole situation started down in his house in Arkansas. Dougie is living with her now because she said that he's had, um, his cancer has come back. So he's staying with her, I guess, so she can keep an eye on him, maybe doctors and that kind of thing. And he's trying to talk to her about what happened. And she said, you know, I feel bad. He said, what? What do you feel bad about? I feel bad about last night. Now, here's the key, y'all. And I hope y'all caught what I caught. Lorna said, I have a tendency that when I get angry, I say things. And then I regret it. She also said, hey. I don't really have no problem with Ashley. Ashley is the friend that she cussed out at the party and called her fat. Well, she didn't cuss out, but she talked about her, called her fat, told Roger that she wasn't this and that. That's, that's who it is. She said, I mean, I really love Roger because at the end of the day, she's been a really good friend. I mean, I love Ashley because she's been a really good friend to Roger. And I really don't, I, you know, I, she irritated me. You know, she, she kind of popped off at me that first time we met. But after that, like, I really didn't have no problem with her. See, and what that said to me was, Lorna said exactly what they said she said. Lorna did exactly what they said she did because she one of them people that when she gets angry, she feels like she can say or do whatever it is that she needs to say or do. And then when she get over it, everybody else is supposed to just be over it. And then she doesn't understand the next day or two days later when she's over it, why everybody is mad at her because she's over it. So everybody else is supposed to just be over it. And then she becomes the victim. Then it's, I don't understand why everybody is treating me so bad. I don't understand why Roger won't talk to me. I don't understand why he won't, why can't we talk? Why can't we work this out? Because see, now you be, you've made yourself the victim after you have victimized all these people. Now, Uncle Dougie brought up a good point too. Uncle Dougie said, you sure you're not jealous? He said, you sure this not jealous? I said, ooh. Because, you know, it used to be you and Raja, and now Raja has a friend that's sort of taking up your time. Now, for the rest of this episode, they're trying to convince Raja to have a conversation with his grandmother. Do I think he should have a conversation with his grandmother? Maybe. Maybe. But I now believe, in my opinion, and I know, please leave it in the comments, y'all. But in my opinion, I now believe that she did exactly what they said she did. Because I know some of y'all were like, well, I don't think she would make racist comments. She has a biracial, you know, biracial child, children and her, you know, her grandchildren. And 
you know, she has family members. We see Dougie. I believe Dougie is probably LGBTQ. Well, you know, her sons are, are you know, LGBTQ. So why would she make nasty comments about uh, Raja? Listen. Just because she has accepted that doesn't mean that in a fit of anger she won't throw out a slur. It just is what it is. I, you know, I've seen people do it all the time. You love somebody, you y'all y'all seen it happen. You got a you had a best friend and they a white best friend, and y'all are best friends and everything is good and gravy. And then y'all get mad and and maybe maybe some 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 things are done and said and they come out their mouth with with a slur. Cause they know what's gonna get you because they're trying to get you mad. See, there's some people that when they mad, they just want you to be mad. Cause they want to fight and they want to argue. So I want to find the, the one thing or or that that thing that's gonna make you respond that way. Okay. Anyway, moving on. This next scene, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. This scene came across to me as very much um theater school. You had the, the daughter, the girlfriend, Bean's girlfriend, Bean and Raja. They went to the little dollar store to go get some decorations for one of the baby girls' birthday child. It's Kiki's birthday, and Kiki, one of Kiki's kids is born on her birthday. And, of course, the child gets all of the attention for her birthday, and Kiki feels some kind of way about it. But And I understand that. As somebody who loves their birthday, listen, I understand it. I get it. Even though it's her own child, I understand her wanting to have her own day. I get that. Um, but they're in the dollar store having this, in my opinion, this fake argument. It just seemed very much like we want a scene. We want a scene for the show. Cause the two boys were standing off to the side. Like, I mean, it got to the point where Bean was like, well, when y'all figure this out, y'all let me know. I'm going to go pick the baby up from school. I'll, I'll take her around to the park. To buy some time while y'all get the house set up for the birthday situation. Because I don't know what all this is. <laughs> and I felt the same way. I felt like it was very performative. Like it was very fake. I, I don't want to use the word fake, but I feel like it was fake. So then we see Andre and Lorna down to the um cafe having a little, a little conversation. And... Andre's talking to Lorna about getting Kiki in the studio and keeping Kiki focused while they're trying to get all these things done. And then, you know, he, um, she talks about the party again and, you know, everything with Raja or whatever. And then Andre invites her to his, uh, event to launch his, his Christmas cake situation. And she tells him that, you know, he tells her that she's doing, he's doing a high end Christmas product and that that's his first product that he's launching. And he really wants her to come. And she's like, okay, cool, no problem. She said, you tell Kiki about it. And he was like, yeah, I mean, she know. I knew then it's going to be a problem. You talking about some, yeah, she know. Does she know, Andre? Um. So then we see Kiki and Lorna going to pick up the cake for the baby. And um, once again, she talks to Kiki about, you know, the party and you know wanting to talk to Raja and trying to work it out with Raja or whatever um then she talks about she doesn't feel well she's got her vert her, her vertigo is acting up and so she's probably not going to come to the party now I think Kiki felt like she ain't coming because she she's not ready to face Raja but Kiki was like okay girl you're not coming to the party okay that's fine you know I, I'm sorry you don't feel well she then tells Kiki about Andre's event and Kiki was like, I mean, I he said something about it, but I ain't, you know, you could tell that Kiki was like, I mean, I think he said something about it, but it wasn't in the forefront of her mind. I don't feel like it was an event that she was all, uh, you know, that it was, you know, a, a must, a must attend situation for her. And then her mother was like, yeah, because Andre said it's black tie. It's a formal event. It's going to be at his house and it's going to be small, but it's going to be a very formal event. Now, I didn't, I mean, when somebody, it can't be that big of a of a product launch if it's going to be at his house and it's going to be small. But, again, she said it's going to be a formal event. So, you know, it's, some planning went into it, I guess, is what she's trying to say, you know. So, then, um, 
we get back to the house, child. The kids is trying to get the decorations and stuff together. Bean, I don't know. Bean didn't understand the text. I don't know. Bean misunderstood. But Bean had brought the baby home while they were still trying to decorate. And his girlfriend was irritated because she was like, that was not the message. I did not tell you we were ready. I did not tell you to bring her over here. Why is she here? He was like, oh, well, things happen. What you mean things happen? Like, he was unbothered that he ruined the whole surprise. And it wasn't even like, he was like, oh, my bad. Did I, oh, shoot. Did I not read the message? Like, he was like, oh, oh, well. Things happen. I said, what? <laughs> I was confusion. So, Andre shows up with the cake and, you know, and all these good things. And, you know, they do the little happy birthday, yada, yada, yada. Andre says, well, you know, Nana couldn't be here, uh, but she did send her gift. And Raja brought up a good point. Now, Raja don't know that Nana said she wasn't feeling well and that her vertigo, her vertigo, or whatever it was, was it, she don't have vertigo, vertigo, was acting up. But, but, his point was valid. He said, so the party that she wasn't invited to, that I clearly asked her to not come to, she found time. The party that she's invited to, she's a no-show. Now, again, he don't know that Grandma said she wasn't feeling well, but I definitely feel him on that. But he said that, I said, ooh, well, he got a point. Then Uncle Dougie talks to Raja again about talking to his grandmother. And again, Raja is saying the same stuff he's been saying, child. He ain't changed his tune. But what he finally said was, look, clearly they are not going to leave me alone. Until I agree to talk to this woman. Now, I don't like the fact that he's disrespecting her and calling her and not acknowledging that she's his grandmother. I really don't like that. Um, but he said, you know what? And since they're not going to leave me alone until I talk to her, I'll go ahead and talk to her. But I really don't feel like anything is going to change. So my thing is, if you're walking into the conversation, ready for the conversation to not work, it's not going to work. Like, you've already made up your mind that it's not going to work. So, since you've made up your mind it's not going to work, it's not going to work. But anyway. So, then we get down to the studio, baby. Kiki is knocking it out. They came up with a good idea where she would have fan interaction with who she, um, of, um, who should pick the next single. And I thought that was cute that she would put it out on social media and let, like, like have the three... I guess snippets of the three singles and then we would we would be able to vote and then that would be the single that she released I thought that was a cute idea to get her fans involved and stuff like that um so that was cute or whatever so then Andre when they get done with the session and they get ready to leave Kiki packing up the baby and of course you know her husband is there in his uniform listen he gonna be consistent that man listen we are almost at the end of this season and I have not seen that man in anything else other than that black wife beater, them black sweatpants, them slides with them black socks, and his and his uh, do rag. The only exception was that he wore a cut off black hoodie to Roger's birthday party, but he still had on them black sweatpants. The rest of the uniform was intact. Okay, he if he ain't nothing else, he consistent. I'm gonna give him that. And I believe he, I, I ain't even insinuating that it's the same thing. I feel like his closet probably, he probably got 20 pairs of sweatpants, probably 50 white beetles. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he just has stopped. Anyway, Andre invites them to his event, his product event. And Kiki is irritated because Kiki has said that she has told Andre from the beginning that she wants to start a baby product line. She has an idea for it's basically like a a, a, a a mini baby blanket for the back of the baby's head that has silk on one side um, to help the baby head not be pulled out from the like the harsh baby blanket material. Um, again, y'all, I see both sides of this coin. I really do because on one hand, I understand that Kiki is like, listen, so you're using my show to launch your product when I've asked you to help me launch my product for the last 15 years, and it hasn't happened. Now, when I heard 15 years, I had to do a hurt. Kiki White, 
Can you why? At this point in time, ma'am, you don't have nobody to blame but yourself. It should not take nobody 15 years to put a product out if they really, really want to get it out. Now, I understand that as, his, as your manager, you asked him to help you get it done. He said, girl, you haven't done anything. You ain't, you haven't put together a plan. You haven't put no specs together. You don't have, like, you've done nothing to put it in a position for me to go out and try to sell it to somebody. Like, you think that just because you want to make a product, it's just going to fall out of the sky, and that's not how this works. So, yes, I seized the opportunity to put my product out there to sell my product, and Kiki was like, I thought because this was my show that we would be doing my things, meaning my product. But, again, Kiki, we are in the next to last episode, and I ain't heard nothing about no baby blanket. Nothing. Now, do I think it's smart that Kiki wants to create a, some baby products? Hell yeah. Because if we don't know you up for nothing else, we know you for singing and babies. That's it. And it may not be in that order, but we know you that we know that you can sing, and we know you can make some babies. Now, we might not know nothing else about Kiki Y, but we know them two things. So do I think that that's a good idea? It sure is. And if you had the idea 15 years ago, ma'am, you have had 10 more kids. Maybe not 10. But you've had a lot more kids in the time you thought of this idea until now. And I, at this point, and I get it, I get it. Everybody doesn't have a business acumen. Everybody doesn't know what you're supposed to do and what that looks like and what you have to present. But you know what I know, Kiki? I know you can find somebody to help you put a business plan together. I know you can find somebody to help you do a prototype that you could present to some companies. I know you can. I know, and you, you had a prototype on the show. You showed us the prototype. So, again, in my, do I feel like Andre was wrong for creating a product and using this platform as an opportunity to launch his brand? No. No. Do I understand why you feel slighted because he did it? Yes. I do. Do I feel like you could have been more proactive and getting this done on this show during this time period on this platform? Maybe. Because I don't know the conversations you and Andre had when y'all were putting this show together. I don't know what those um, conversations were. But once again, Kiki gets upset. Now, I know we're creating a show, so I understand that. But when Kiki told you she was mad and she was done talking for tonight, and you kept going and going and going and going, at that point, you just get what you get. When somebody tell you they done... And that they need, she told you, I just need to calm down. I'm just, I'm just mad right now and I don't want to talk to you. Baby, you got to respect that. You kept talking and you kept trying to make her have this conversation. So she ended up cussing you out. And my thing is, I've only known Kiki for seven episodes and I know that. You have known Kiki for 20 years. When she getting mad, leave her the hell alone and let her be mad. She just like her mama. She get mad, she cusses you out, and then when she get over it, everybody's supposed to be over it. You know that about her. Now, Kissy is there. And Kiki feels like Kissy took Andre's side over hers. And remember, she felt like Kissy did that the last time. She felt like Kissy was on Andre's side over hers the last time. So now, once again, she feels like she's in a situation where she's the odd man out. And she even asked her husband, am I, am I tripping? I mean, am I tripping? She even asked producers, am I tripping? Am I the wrong one in this? Like, tell me, be honest. And everybody is telling her no. Like, the producer was like, girl, your feelings are valid. You know, if, if you feel that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Her husband said, no, you're not crazy. And I don't think she's crazy. Like, I understand her being upset and frustrated. I just think that Kiki need to work on, and she's too old not to have these skills, but Kiki need to work on that. She really, truly needs to work on that. But anyway, child, that's what we ended. She didn't tell Andre she done. She want him out of her life. And baby, that is with um, the comp Andre on the inside fussing with Kissy. Uh, Kiki on the outside fussing with her husband in production. Once again, she breaking the fourth wall and she fussing with production. And then somewhere in the middle, in between times, and in the meantime, um, Kiki said... If she in there with him instead of out here with me, then fuck both of them. And, baby, they took off in that car. I said, oh, my. Oh, my. So, anyway, y'all, that was the episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later.